Welcome back to the Next Gen Profits Podcast, where your big brother and sister, Deborah Ann. And Michael Faltazen. So, yesterday, our spiritual parents taught you about the expectations every mentor has for their mentee. Now, I want to share a little more on the flip side of that, because it took me a while to figure out what those expectations were, because I'm that no-nonsense prophet, you guys. <laughs> I really did not give two cents and to what everybody else thought because my ideas, well, they were the best. And me and my apostle, whoo, we butted heads. You see, I'm not just a spiritual daughter to Apostles Craig and Colette. I'm their eldest natural daughter. And me and my father, we're very stubborn-headed. And so it took one stubborn-headed apostle and one stubborn-headed prophet to come together to figure out what those expectations were. So let me give you the shortcut there, okay? Oh, Deborah, before we carry on, I have to share this funny story. Okay, guys, I was in the office today and my little brother, Apostle Crane Collette's youngest son, Michael, we call him Mikey. <laughs> he was busy helping Jessica out in the bookshop and he just kept getting this thing wrong. They were busy fixing these book covers. They were trying to get the book covers and Jessica was telling him, no, Michael, look, this book is scratched. We cannot send this to the customer. The book is ruined. We have to reorder. And there was a back and forth. You know, the two bulls hitting heads and Mikey just was so stubborn. He did not want to relent. He said, no, Jessica, we can do this. We can send this. And Jessica being the bookshop manager, she turned and said, Michael William, we're not sending this out to the customer. It is not professional. Guys, I think I triggered back to my early days of starting in the ministry. You see, when I joined the ministry almost eight years ago, I was that little TNG. I was little Mikey in that office. And <laughs> Deborah, I had to do the exact same thing. Literally, guys, word for word. What happened with Mikey in that office happened with me and Jessica. I wanted to send out, funny enough, the strategies of war books, but the entire spine had these black ink marks on. Now, I mean, they're just ink marks, right? The interior is fine. The exterior is fine. Everything is good. Except Jessica, she has an eye for details. She's our graphics designer and she does all the podcast graphics. So you know exactly what I'm talking about when I say eye for detail. Those are not professional. And I looked at her and I said, Jessica, we can send these books out. And there it began, the TNG, Mr. Michael over here, thinking he knows best, thinking that his way is the best way. I did not make a very good disciple, guys. I had to shift my mindset. I had to change until I got to the point where I was looking at those details, just as Jessica did, was I only able to progress forward. Let's be honest, prophets. We know better because we're in the spirit all the time, right? We're <laughs> seeking God. We're praying through. Little do we know, while we're focused on our one little revelation, our poor apostles are out there seeing the entire nation mm -hmm. and city that needs to be built. And sometimes those two images will conflict because while we're focused on that one little brick in the foundation, they're making sure the entire tower is built straight. So let's take a step back because like I said, mm. I butted heads with my apostle and these are three keys that are going to help you avoid that. One, prioritize. <laughs> yes. Prioritize their jobs. Prioritize what's important to them. No matter what you think, no matter how important you think your revelation is, it might be important to you. But in the scale of that tower in that city, it's one brick. We'll come back to it. Prioritize the rest of the building. Look, we're around the dinner table and I'm talking to my fellow brothers and sisters in arms. And you know that saying, the cats are the way the mouse come out to play? Yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. Guys, I didn't prioritize my apostle's tasks. Now, you know, Apostle Colette, I work directly under her and she's a driver. She expects excellence, and even above excellence, you got to put your 110% in at all times. And this one day, she gave me a task. I didn't do the task, guys. I really thought I prioritized everything else 
over that. And I thought I was doing a good job, right? I did my 50 tasks, Apostle. And she came to the end of the day saying, Michael, did you do that one task? I said, no, but I did the 50 other tasks. Yes, Michael, but I gave you the one task. Did you prioritize your tasks or my tasks? So prophets prioritize your apostles tasks first. Trust me, you want to get the jump start of getting into a habit of making sure that you are helping them drive their vision forward because that one task that they've given you is actually according to that bigger picture that you're not seeing yet. Whew, you guys, last week I was so nervous, but this week I'm feeling much more comfortable. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling much more myself because I'm sitting here with you guys. I'm on this journey with you and I want you to get this. We made all the mistakes so you don't mm. have to. Please Come learn on. from us. And yes, we're sharing our stories. We're sharing our reality with you because we know the truth. Mm. You've hit this wall many times already. So let's show you how to get out because there's two more points I have for you. And they're relatively simple points. Point two, seek out correction. This one is my favorite because I'm the prophet <laughs> that loves to put her foot in it. I will say the wrong thing, knowing it's the wrong thing, but not knowing what else to say or do. <laughs> and so please don't be afraid. Seek out the correction because Amen. as Apostle Amen. Craig and Colette taught yesterday, correction is the best way to receive yes. impartation. You want yeah. their spiritual DNA? You want the ability to see that temple that's being built? Go get corrected. And you will for sure get their vision. Because they remove those scales that are on your eyes, preventing you from seeing the full vision. Deborah, you're hitting the nail on the head over there. I see all you prophets. I'm feeling all you prophets in the spirit. And just as we're talking to you around your dinner table, guys, correction is actually for you. It's not for the fact that your mentor is coming to tear you down and to crush you. No, it's actually to receive that impartation to build you up and seek it out. Just as we said in point number two, go and seek it out, guys. Don't wait for the correction to come to you, else you're never going to grow. Now, point three. In order to do point three, I have a task for you. Come join us at MyPropheticTribe.com because this point, point number three, is to meet and speak with your leader often. You need to get their vision for the day or for the week. It's not good enough to meet once on Sunday and maybe once a month. No, you need to meet and collaborate often. So if you want help with that, myprophetictribe.com is the best place to do it. We can continue to give you tips and tricks and we can show you how to navigate the relationship with your leader effectively to avoid those head bumping moments. I want to dive into that one word that you said, communication. Guys, this is vital step for the mentor and disciple, communication. And Apostle Colette, I love her to bits. She has a lot of men in her team. And I don't know if this is just an us guy thing, but we are terrible communicators. There, I said it. I got it out. It's on the recording. Gents, we've got to up our game in communication. If we don't communicate that we've done a task or that we're picking up something in the spirit, our mentors will never know. Prophets, listen to your big brother over here. Communication is vital for the vision that your mentor is trying to part into you. So take a moment with me, guys. When was the last time you communicated with your mentor? Come on. Think about it. When you know there's a disconnect, where you know where something is just not feeling right, the glue is not sticking, what did you do? How did you communicate? What happened in that moment, Prophet? I love that key of how did you communicate? Because again, as prophets, we think we know everything. And so we communicate on how we think the message needs to be communicated. But what is the preferred method your mentor has for communication? Find out from them. Do they want you to email? Do they want you to text? Do they want you to pick up the phone and call them? Or just go out for coffee once a week? Find out. Get talking. And as you get talking, you get vision. And as you get vision, you can seek out correction. So let's connect further. 
Let's help you figure out your strategy to work with your mentor at MyPropheticTribe.com and we're going to hand the mic back over to our apostles, Apostles Craig and Colette, for a message that's going to elevate your prophetic anointing to a double portion for tomorrow's podcast. I can't wait to see you guys next week, Wednesday. It's the highlight of my week. I'll see you around, prophets. Bye for now.